Okay, so the secret is you rip a tag off the mattress, set it on fire, and send it adrift like one of those boats and those Viking funerals, but a tiny boat, just a tiny boat with a mattress tag, and uh, you should ace every test, so there you go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You need two mattress tags. What is up everybody? Is it Michaela here and I'm super excited. I got all new recording equipment um, for the channel and I'm having so much fun learning to use it. So I figure while I'm learning to use the new camera, uh, let's sit down and have a little bit of chat, a little bit of chat. Good job, Michaela. You can words. Hey, little chat about exams. So when I was doing chemical engineering in college, I managed to get out of there with a 3.8 GPA which isn't a 4.0, I was never a valedictorian. Stupid organic chemistry. There was also one semester where I was so excited uh, to hack my Pokemon games to make a competitive team that I kind of didn't study a lot, but somehow I managed to uh, get out of there with a 3.8, just like a few Bs, nothing crazy, um, but I did ace a lot of my exams. I felt at the end of my college career that I really got an exam acing kind of down to a system. I did the same thing for every test, I performed exactly the same way, and I usually got the same results. When I deviated from that method, I tended to not get as good results. So I thought this would be a great topic to introduce and show you how I prepared for tests. Yes, I know I'm supposed to eat a good meal, I'm not supposed to subsist on coffee and memes for all of college, but you know what? When you're in engineering, you gotta live on whatever you can live. And sometimes living on memes and coffee and bagels were the only things that kept you going during those times. Tell uh, some flashbacks there. That's okay. That's okay. Rolling right along. So I wanted to just talk about my method for studying for tests. Um, because I think it can really help a lot of people because it's very systemic and it uses a concept that I learned in computer programming called modularization. So for those that don't know, modularization is a very key part of computer programming. Essentially, what you do when you modularize something is you take a complex task and break it up into smaller tasks. Those smaller tasks are much easier to program than the one giant large task. And when you break things up, it's much easier than taking it all on together. Have you ever noticed that when you pull an all-nighter for studying for a test, you forget all of that information within like a week? Our brains aren't really equipped for long-term retention of a complete information dump with absolutely no modularization behind it. Because being able to modularize and box skills and knowledge is what humans do best. When you get really good at something, you find that the things that you used to think a lot about are just automatic. Maybe it's chess and an opening that you really struggled with, you just play immediately and you just have an instinct about what move to play next. Or you're doing tennis and you hit the ball really just well, you don't have to think about where your foot is or where your hand is. That's your brain modularizing. And that's the approach that I took with my exams. And so the main secret to all of my test acing was how I created my one page note sheet. Now, for a lot of engineering uh, exams, you had to create a note sheet. They gave you a page of notes that you could do somewhere open books, somewhere open homework. Those were sometimes the scariest because when the teacher gave you literally every resource possible and the class average was still at 35%, those questions were crazy. Thank God there was a curve because getting an A in the engineering world sometimes meant getting a 56. So how did I create my note sheet in a way that could optimize my success and really capitalize on computer programming's concept of modularization? A lot of times when people first make a note sheet, their first goal is to just dump all the key points onto their sheet, write all the formulas down, and hope that's enough. A lot of times that doesn't help, especially in engineering because engineering courses are based on a very deep understanding of how to use the formulas, not just what the formulas are. Oftentimes in chemical engineering, we'd be able to take our entire notebook with us and the professors just laughed because it wasn't about knowing the formulas or not knowing the formulas. It was about how to use those formulas. So a lot of times it just wouldn't help you. The method for sort of doing well on tests sort of came from preparing and making that note sheet because I realized that my original method really wasn't working. I had the note sheet, I had the formulas, didn't quite know how to use them. And so something different, I need to do something different with my study habits. The best way that I found to make a note sheet for any test prep, or even if they don't allow note sheets, I recommend making one anyway, just one page front and back. 
because this is so helpful, is you start by taking your entire notebook on the test subject and then distill it into one page over the course of your study sessions. That's how I did literally every single one of my exams. I started out with my entire notebook filled with every chapter's worth of material. Let's say the test was on chapters one through five. I had all chapters one through five read and notated in my notebook. Then what I did was I read it, tried to comprehend it, and then tried to do my best to take a complete notebook on every chapter and distill it into one page for each chapter. Taking the key points, taking the how the formulas fit together, everything in that chapter, make it one page. By doing that, what you're doing is effectively modularizing your knowledge base. You're taking very complicated subject matter composed of a lot of different formulas and uses and simplifying it into one singular task, one single notebook page. And that notebook page, because you did the groundwork and because you already took notes on your entire chapter, either by yourself or during class, you built that foundation and now whenever you see that one notebook page, it will trigger the rest of the chapter for you. It's kind of like a mind palace that you saw in Sherlock or some other shows uh, where you effectively take a large amount of information and link it to other sources in your brain. These different links help you remember. And so when you're starting from cha your chapter and distilling into your one page, you're creating all of those links. And what you write on your one page notebook or your one page note sheet is going to trigger the things that you've studied in your notebook. This also keeps you from getting bogged down with information. It keeps you from getting overloaded with all your notes. The more you can distill and identify the key subjects, the better your chances are of remembering it when it counts and applying it in new and interesting ways. Okay, so you've notated your entire notebook. You've made one page on each of your chapters. Now you do the work on figuring out how to turn your five chapters worth of pages into one single page. This is the really fun part because you have to try to take the cream of the crop, the best of the best, the most descriptive and efficient way of translating everything you've learned onto one single page. But it's not as scary as trying to do that from your textbook to one page because you already laid the groundwork. You already simplified your textbook into notebooks and your notebooks into one page for each chapter. So now the best way to proceed is to take all those one pagers and make it a master page. By creating this master page between chapters, you'll learn how each of the key subjects in your chapters fit together. You'll create connections you haven't learned before. Maybe a certain equation in chapter one is applied differently in chapter two, and you wouldn't realize that because you were just so in the weeds of how to use that equation in chapter two. It also further modularizes your knowledge base from one page for each chapter to maybe one segment of a page for each chapter. And then when you go in for the test, your, your note page isn't just a collection of random formulas you jotted down that you hoped you didn't remember. Your note page is actually a result. You've created something, you've created a way to remember everything that you've studied. This is not going to be an easy trick. There's no simple solution like, hey, if you drink two cups of coffee, study, drink two more cups, don't get sleep, and then rub a monkey's paw three times, you'll get an A easy. Unfortunately not. You do have to budget your time, you do have to do the work, and you do have to lay the foundation for an understanding of your material. I think this works, this methodology works so well for engineering because everything inherently is very modular. You start out with the master equation for, let's say, fluid dynamics, and then you learn how certain terms drop off when certain parts of the problem are unimportant. You learn how to distill a complex formula into a simple one, and you learn how each term is created. Then you learn how to make your own formulas from a fluid balance completely from scratch. And the key is understanding how those things link together, because your test questions are going to be very, very evil. No matter how many times I practiced my problems, no how many times I studied, I'd always get a problem thrown at me that I had no idea what to do. And with this method of notes to page to one master page, that will help be how you create the links to that creativity, at least for me. So that's how I studied. But it's important to take this advice and integrate it into your lives in the most effective way. Like I said, everybody's different. Everyone has different ways that they study and ways that they learn. And it's important to understand how you learn. Are you an auditory learner? Do you learn best when people are telling you things? Are you a visual learner? Do you need to, to be shown to you? Or are you a kinesthetic learner? 
or you physically need to do the problem to have it ingrained in your mind. For example, I'm a kinesthetic learner. Writing things down, distilling things down into one page, going to chalkboards after hours and just writing on the chalkboard and doing problems with my friends, that's how I learn. I learn best when I'm doing things, when I'm building things, when I'm playing with things, and when I'm making things accidentally explode. If you just try to talk at me, I will not listen. I will be zoned out after five minutes. So it's so important to know your learning style. So I hope that this trick of distilling your notes and modularizing your knowledge can help you. I'm not sure how well this will perform outside of STEM fields, just because I didn't major in anything outside of a STEM field. My ability to do history is like, but I know for STEM and science, it works wonders. So that's my video. I really hope that this helps you guys and gives you guys an ability to look at knowledge and learning in more of an engineering way. Non-STEM people that might be watching, how have you guys studied best for exams? Have you found that the techniques I've described also work for non-science related fields? And people that are into science, do you guys have any tips, tricks? Do you guys have things that help make it easier? I would love to hear your comments in the comment section below. And I'd also love uh, to see you guys again. So definitely subscribe to my channel if you like all of this science uh, vlog slash building weird stuff kind of vibe that I'm sort of cementing myself into. Only like 100,000 more subscribers and then I could completely sell out and then try to sell an online course that doesn't actually work. Then maybe quit YouTube, figure out what I wanna do with my life, take some sort of trip Maybe start a new channel, thinking that that's the problem, when actually the problem is humans' never-ending need for improvement and more views. I can't wait to see you guys again. Uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about something that I built and coded next week, and I'm really excited for that. That is in the bank, waiting to be released, and I can't wait to show you. So uh, let me know how you like the video, and I can't wait to see you all again. Stay healthy, stay active, study well, and kick the test butt. I know you can do it. So I believe in you and I'll see you later.